Well, come back, Kyle. What? Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's good to be back. In life or in Azeroth? Uh... Where, where do we where do we stand? We're both coming at this from the longest breaks we have both individually ever taken from the game that shall not be named World of Warcraft. Then you name it. It's it's the Voldemort of MMOs at this point. For me, it really just comes down to Shadowlands was a massive, massive disappointment. So over a year ago now, I unsubbed and I started playing Final Fantasy XIV. I've never taken a break this long before I've taken breaks before but not like this and Kyle you haven't played since what early BFA 2019 BFA spring would have been the last time I touched the game I quit because of the story made no sense Azerite armor war fronts island expeditions just pure absolute burnout I didn't even touch Shadowlands. This is well before any news came out about Blizzard. Just the game was bad. And it was riddled with systems. And the Azerite Earthblood story thing. And Sylvanas stealing a dead body from Jaina's brother or cousin or something. It made no sense. It wasn't going anywhere. That part was cool. I like that part. It's, well, it's a <laughs> badass idea. But you had to sit on it. And it's, this isn't like sitting on Game of Thrones for a week or maybe, heaven forbid, there's a holiday and Game of Thrones, Thrones takes two weeks. This was months of waiting with a brother body in a cask. And it didn't go anywhere. None of it mattered. It sucked. We're making this video because we're not quitting Final Fantasy XIV to go play World of Warcraft, but we are both interested for me, I still love the Warcraft universe. It is still among my favorite fictions out there. Kyle, you seem more curious from an investigative standpoint, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. Oh, that's, that's the truth of it. I've been on these videos comparing World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy, and frankly, my comparisons are extremely old, almost four years old. Very outdated information, as many people have informed me about when I talk about particularly healing in World of Warcraft. Now, I played a disc priest at that time, but still, I've been wrong about a lot of things. There's a lot going on with Dragonflight. There's a lot of promises being made, such as Third Era, saying this is a completely new vision for World of Warcraft. Which is highly specific. That is from a, a really well-done video that Preach just put out. It is not part of WoW's marketing push, unless you look at that Preach video as part of WoW's marketing push, which I think you could, but it's also distinctly... Uh, not the script fest uh, that like the Dragonflight reveal was. No, and you can go watch our review of that particular announcement. That was bad. That was just bad. But they're focusing more on evergreen content. Coming from Final Fantasy now, evergreen content is amazing. We have loved our blind minimum eye level extremes. We've loved going through the MSQ and playing it like it's brand new. What is evergreen content for World of Warcraft? It's certainly not their story. That thing's a mess. This is time walking, chromy. You're not weird. even you're not even talking about the quality of the story. You're just talking about how it, it doesn't link together in game anymore. How, how it's you, laid if, out. If you time walk and you hit max level, it's just like that's it. Party's over. We're porting you the way away from what you're doing. I've I've got my my Drac fear ready for Dragonflight expansion day one, and some Death Knights yelling at me to go to Shadowlands. Like it's, some, there, sir, there, that it's, is Bolvar. That is not it some is Death Knight. It is a convoluted That is mess. the Lich King. No, no, it was the dude with just the helmet. It was just the, the helmet dude. The, oh, the Eben, oh, Eben dude. Helmet. oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was very... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Point is... Things are different for us now. This is not our garden variety World of Warcraft break. You've been on breaks. I've been on breaks. We're both coming off of the longest breaks we've ever had. We've both spent our time away from Azeroth with the first MMO to get its hooks into us the way WoW did. I, I am mad impressed with Final Fantasy XIV. I, I started getting 
really invested in its story and its characters at a time where I felt that World of Warcraft story was reaching an all time low and also like massively dropping the ball with 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 one of my favorite characters ever. Uh, and I bet it. They didn't stick the landing for me. I think it was. I think everything they did with Sylvanas was terrible. I'm I'm simultaneously stoked to see Final Fantasy XIV's current endgame, but also a little sad that the end of the MSQ is starting to come into sight. Final Fantasy is now like a part of my personality, the way WoW is, and I haven't had that before. But before we move on, we know you're subbed to this channel because no one would ever watch a video on YouTube without being subbed. That's just, that that's insane. That's villainy. You would never do that. You're clearly subbed. But did you know that we have two other channels and a podcast? Go check out our Clips channel over at Grinding Gear Clips. We also have a stream VOD channel. And uh, Kyle, you and I are uh, seasoned podcast veterans at this point. <laughs> It's true. That podcast can be found wherever it is you get your podcast. We record it live right here on this channel, but you can find the VODs over on our VOD channel, and the podcast is available on all podcatchers. And for even more extra content, check out our Patreon by visiting supportourbromance.com. Thanks for supporting us in the Grinding Gear Cinematic Universe. This isn't a review of Dragonflight. The launch was a mess, and neither of us have even had a chance to get our dragons yet. I tried this morning, dude, and they shut the server off on me. <laughs> oh, wow. I got to play a little last night. Oh, did you I, get your I, dragon? I, the, no, no, the Zeppelin appeared. The, the Zeppelin <laughs> worked. You know, I arrived on the coast, and there was the the visage, not the spell, the visage, but the, the view of the isle shrouded in mist, and it was pretty and... The sky was arded. It was, it was ashy. There was ash in the air. There was, yeah. there was this trail of fire. It, it looks, I, I really like how it looks. I like how it looks. But the point of this is, is to talk about what it's like dusting off World of Warcraft after feeling like we've been fully absorbed into Final Fantasy XIV for over a year now. You hit me up during your break and you were like, hey, I, I want to I dip my toe into Dragonflight because it, it appears I'm coming back on Dragonflight release day. I was like, ooh, okay, I got to prepare. I got to prepare. I got to go into World of Warcraft like a classic car that's just been rotting away in a barn. I got to open up my World of Warcraft garage and take the tarp off. In my case of like four different characters, because I wasn't sure what I wanted to start with. And it ended up not mattering because I haven't gotten to play Dragonflight. But I did return to World of Warcraft post Dragonflight patch, which means, and, and you have too, which means we've seen all of the other new things. My first surprise, dude, was seeing that new UI. Cause I, I, I was just sitting alone in my room while I was updated and I was like, all right, let's log in. And I was being lazy. I didn't go update my add-ons. So I just turned them all off and I get in. And I was like, Oh, Hey, I know this from final fantasy. <laughs> yeah. It's a very final fantasy look of things. I uh, even has the grid. If you want to turn it on, it, that's nice. So this is the kind of like quality of life stuff that hopefully they focus on when they're not making this modular expansion only content. I love the new UI. I think it's fantastic. And I, I don't know, I feel like there's two types of people in the world, the type of people uh, that get angry when, when games just take things from other games and the kind of people that are like, oh, thank God, you're taking what works from your competition. Um, I'm in the latter camp. I, I'm very happy about this. I'm like, thank goodness, it's that's how it should be. I love it in Final Fantasy for a reason, and I used to install add-ons World of Warcraft that let me do that for a reason, and now I, I, I don't need them. If you like MMOs, you want an arms race here. You want both to be competing with each other. Now, each, of, each game is being made in the past. We're playing a two-year-old game with Dragonflight, and when the next Final Fantasy expansion comes out, that would have been made after Endwalker, so... The arms race is going to be messy. This isn't a, you know, shark tail and finding Nemo situation. This is happenstance. But hopefully they continue to steal from each other and we get altogether better game. And then there's Drakthir. Kyle, there's Drakthir, which when they showed off Drakthir, when they showed off this new race and class, they're both, they're just locked. If you want to be an evoker, you got to play a Drakthir. If you want to be a Drakthir, you have to play an evoker. That's it. That's your only option. I talked some good smack. I 
talk some good smack, dude. I took one look at those wimpy noodle looking dragons with their rounded off bat wings. And I just started, I just started ripping into them. Like these are the lamest looking dragon people I've ever seen. Why do they got human eyes? What kind of type of furry fantasy is going on here? Which I realized they already have Worgen and cow people. They're they're scaly. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I was, I want, gargoyles give me wing capes you know you put them around your oh, collar man. and you lock them and they flow down the back when you're not using them when they're out make them more like concave rather than convex i'm not doing another i'm not i'm not opening photoshop i'm not doing an art <laughs> lecture here it's not happening not this time that would be its own video but you have preferences clearly yes I mean, they're I have, more lizard folk than dragons yes and then but then a couple things happened one, we got the, 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 the animatics. I forget what they're called for this one, and I haven't watched them all because I'm not that interested in Dragonflight's story. But I watched the first one just to see what was going on. And Nosdormu shows up, and he's talking to a Drakthir, and they're hanging out being buddy-buddy. Pretty sure Nosdormu's evil already, by the way. I think that's going to be the twist of this expansion. The art of the Drakthir in, in that, the way they paint the Drakthir, it's kind of how I want them to look. A little more monstrous, a little more, like, lizardy. Like you, fe- you came across a velociraptor in the Jurassic Park jungle, and you're a little scared. That's that's what I wanted. That happened, and it kind of like injected that seed into my brain that I can then, you know, my imagination can take over when I go and play the game. The other thing that happened was I just, I just, I just had a quiet afternoon during the Thanksgiving break. I was just kind of like, what should I do with my time? I went and fired up a drag theater. I got to eat my hat. They're cool. Nah, but you don't have to eat the whole hat. I'm not going to eat the wing hat. They still have lame ass wings when they're running around. Like it already looks like a cosplayer built those wings. I'm eating almost the whole hat. I think they're pretty rad. I think it's more like most RPG situations where from the outside, Bioware games, RPGs, you're making your custom character. They're going to look bad, but you get in there and you start finding the options that you personally like. And you elevate that bad somewhat to your own personal preference. And there's a lot, there's just a surprising amount of customization, plus the visage, the human form you have to customize. You're describing Bethesda games for me. I'm like, my character's going to look busted no matter what. I think custom male Shepard never looked good, no matter how hard you tried. I, I did play the default male Shepard. Yeah, so. yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's what you did. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. But you were able to find the options that worked for you and, and walk away being like, oh, well, all right, but that's kind of cool looking. For me, the the big, like, this isn't Final Fantasy moment anymore for me was I was killing things in the first two minutes and everyone was asking <laughs> me to kill things. Hopefully it's under attack. I could use a good fight. <laughs> I, I went in reading all the text. Like, I, I even made a drag theory because I was watching those promotional videos, Alex Straza standing up on the rock talking about something, something, the evasion, the danger of the head, and Cadgar's there. I I didn't care about the plight of thousands of year old dragons. I don't care about Cadgar telling the mortal races to unite once again. I figured playing a drag theater would actually insert me into the story that they're working on. And it did. It, it kind of introduced me to a dragony world. And I killed a lot of things. And I read every bit of text. Like, I I was reading it like it was MSQ. And that that definitely trailed off pretty quickly because it didn't really matter. Oh, no. Yeah, no, I skimmed. I definitely skimmed. It's, it's, I've never been that way about World of Warcraft. And in more recent expansions, if it's particularly important, they're going to have the the dialogue box that pops up and you're going to have the talking head and it'll be voice acted. There's, there's times where it breaks through. Like Dragon Blight, Wrath of Lich King. Like certain Legion quests, when we're hanging out with Pooh Bear, like there are times when the quests you go, oh my god, this is this is good. I need to read all of this. I'm going to absorb this whole zone, but it's rare. I think it's a healthy way to go about it. You know, don't don't force yourself. Um, I certainly I experienced that in Final Fantasy XIV uh, quite recently in Shadowbringers. There's a, some of those zones are are fetch questy, and if if I wasn't streaming it, I would skip. I would skim and move on and until I feel the weight of the story crushing down upon my shoulders again. The other part that I thought was kind of shocking was I spent three years listening to World of Warcraft people complain about how Final Fantasy cutscenes and 
you know, mini cinematics inside the game are very emote heavy and stiff. Come, come on. This is the modern version of the game and the flapping of these draconic lips is the best we can do. Both are jank. Both are both have their jank moments. 100, 100%. I think there's just more of it in Final Fantasy, especially in early Realm Reborn. There's a lot of those where you're just kind of watching people move their arms around. Um, but there's also, in Final Fantasy's defense, a lot more like great, more involved in-game cinematics. Uh, World of Warcraft, it's still pretty rare. When they do them, they're great. Those, those in-game cinematics going all the way back to Wrathgate, that team... Whoever's still around, a lot of people have come and gone. I think of Taron Gregory, because he's the guy out there doing the press junket usually. Um, I, I love those those in-game cinematics, and I think they still look freaking fantastic. I, I don't like the film grain they do. I wish they kept it more in-engine looking. And of course, I, my character's never going to appear in those, which is a disappointment. That's how it works, sadly. That's how WoW works, <laughs> right? You are not the main character. It is you don't get the killing blow. I do think I'm going to be a better MMO player, though, having played multiple MMOs, because I immediately started setting up my bars like they are in Final Fantasy, particularly using shift commands for my AOE attacks. Oh, that, that, aren't they great? Aren't they? I think. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really, really like that. I never did that before. And I got really into talent points. I'm a big fan of deck builders. I never net deck. I think net decking is a sin and you skip half the game. <laughs> that way yeah maybe you want to play tonight i don't have to play tonight i just want to make decks and so i really really like the talent point system being back and i was surprised that there were points for both trees like i really got invested in there i was really crunching on my target dummy really exploring that stuff i'm the complete opposite i uh have no interest in trial and erroring my my talents and i can't stand deck builders outside of like limited magic which it's just part of the format but yeah, it's that's never been a thing for me. And I love that I can just import talent builds now. It is not. Yeah, importing is an important feature. Yeah, it's something I use all the time in Hearthstone. And here it is in World of Warcraft. Works for me. Big fan. The other thing, too, is like uh, Final Fantasy hasn't helped. There's there's no talents to worry about. A job is a job is a job. My Dragoon is like your Dragoon. My Dark Knight is like your Dark Knight. Your Astrologian isn't like my Astrologian because that job scares me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy should steal the import UI. If you could copy a code and just put that in rather than doing that, like, Ooh. upload, save thing, and then you could be like, hey, here's my UI and share it around, that'd be a good advancement. I do not miss talent points in Final Fantasy at all because I have access to every job. And so when I want to explore and feel different, creative, do a dungeon in a different way, I just completely change my job class and that's the interesting thing I've done for the evening. That's more than enough. Last thing I want is talent points on top of having all those jobs available to me. I'm totally fine never having talent points in Final Fantasy XIV. And uh, I'm totally fine not worrying about them in World of Warcraft. But hey, I'm glad they're there for you to, to tinker with. I'll just stand in the corner going, well, he could be playing right now. I'm a dungeon master. I plan for 12 hours and then I play for three. It's what I do. <laughs> and I love it. I absolutely love it. But in that way, it, the fundamental difference between Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft came to light. World of Warcraft, to me, is an action MMORPG. And Final Fantasy is an MMORPG, perhaps drama. There's still action. It's just, for the most part, a lot of it is optional. You're going to have a trial here and there, but you don't have to pursue blind minimum eye level, you know, Thor Dan there's or a anything lot, like that. There's a lot more RPG in in Final Fantasy 14 versus WoW. And you're investing in your character in that way. Like your Warrior of Light is your character. Whereas World of Warcraft, I needed to be a drag theory to even care about the story going on. And the next expansion or another storyline, I would make something completely different. I'm not a main anymore. I play this like Diablo, where based on what I'm seeing, I will be a certain class and character. Uh, throughout all of WoW, I've ebbed and flowed between caring about the story and not giving a rat's ass because I just want to play the game. I'm just there for the gameplay. Um, obviously, the, mo the most I've ever cared is Wrath of the Lich King and then kind of ebbed and flowed through the Cataclysm. I didn't give a damn. World of Warlords of Draenor, literally the least I've ever cared about any game story. Uh, and then Legion was awesome and I was super invested again. And I was like, ooh, where are we going with this? Where are we taking Sylvanas? And then, and then it fell off a cliff. 
in, in, in Final Fantasy XIV, I, I haven't stopped being invested. There's little moments, like I mentioned Fetch Quest, where I'm just like, eh, I don't need to know about the capybara people that live in the cave, but it's fine. But as soon as, the, if, if you're not into that, it doesn't matter. You're going to be back to like the main arc very shortly after that. You're going to be reinvested. At least that's been my experience with it. And so it's like, <laughs> thank you, Dexter. Whatever the case, whether I was in the WoW or not in the WoW, that ebb and flow, Final Fantasy XIV has really stood out for me because I haven't stopped being invested since I started caring, which for me was probably the end. The it was probably Rao Bond losing his <laughs> shutting. Uh, Good place to get invested. Yeah, that's the point where I was like, oh shit, Final Fantasy XIV story's got hands. For me, it was Keeper of the Lake, but still, that's a lot of hours. That's deep in. But to me, it's worth it. It's worth it. I know there's a trend going around right now of, ah, oh, just skip straight to Heaven's Ward. And so they came. And I'm like, no, you can't. I'm that person now. You can't do it. You got to play it all. Because there's, there's so much, especially some of the larger character moments in Heaven's Ward, they are set up in A Realm Reborn. And I'm, I'm that person. I'm like, no, it's not going to hit as hard. You need to go through A Realm Reborn. So uh, uh, my point is. You don't have to play Shadowlands in order to play Dragonfly is your point. Like literally, that, you can completely ignore any story mm -hmm. and go straight to Dragonfly if that's what you care about. And, and because I'm okay with that, and and it yeah. and it it it's in line with your. You, I don't think of WoW as an action RPG. I do think there's been a leak of Diablo into my World of Warcraft for quite some time now, but I still look at it primarily as an MMO. To me, there's still a lot of similarities between Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft. To me, like tab targeting is just comfort. And if you're tab targeting, I'd look at your two games the same way. You can have deviations here and there, but they are primarily played the same way. But where I really agree with you is like, yeah, I don't give a shit about Diablo story. I'm there for the gameplay. It rules. And that's kind of, that's right now how I'm feeling about World of Warcraft. I'm still not bought in. Like whatever, like it, I could see myself caring about whatever story they have to show me in Dragonflight, but they, I need to see it first. And in the advertising campaign stuff, they're doing the cinematic, the original cinematic with Stone Boy. No idea what's going on. They put out another cinematic with like dragon riding and you see this big storm beast and you go, what's that? By playing the Drakthir story, I actually know what's going on. We're going to be fighting a bunch of large elemental based primordial dragon types. Uh, the uh, proto Victorians. Proto Drakes, the Proto Drakes, <laughs> like a bunch of ancient Proto Drakes. And this is the lesser of them all. They keep saying of the storm. Stop it. Here's the storm. Rest in peace. I love you. So now the bosses are lined up and they're going to be big elemental dragons. Have I seen this before? A hundred times. I've done it in my, I did it in my own D&D campaign when I was 13. It is basic, basic boss design. So there's so much that is unknown. We don't even, we don't know what their evergreen content is. We don't know what an expansion for World of Warcraft looks like nowadays without borrowed power. But it's not going to dominate my time like my Warrior Flight does. It's an action game on the side. Another co-op game like Valheim is. So what would get you to play WoW on the regular again, Kyle? A focus on dungeons as the primary way to get gear outside of raiding. And for that, I would love to see the whole roulette system just placed in World of Warcraft. Just let me press a button. You have hundreds of dungeons, surely, at this point. Maybe not that many, but all the expansions together, there's a lot of dungeons. And you've done time walking. Like, allow me to play through that stuff. Not world quests, not war fronts, not main campaign, whatever have you. Like, let me play your action RPG for loot. And get that loot in a co-op environment. That kind of already exists with Mythic Dungeons. Then uh, that doesn't spread into the legacy of the past dungeon content. That's something right, that's that resets. That's playing five at nauseum. That's burnout. Mythic dungeons are burnout. <laughs> but it's it's everything else you're asking for. It's true, and so, I do really like the scaling of a mythic dungeon. It's, it's a I, and you want action RPG like it's straight up like Diablo affixes. It is. I, I like mythics a lot. I just want access to the bulk of them. For my own enjoyment. Let me, and, yeah, let me do them all. Go all, get send yeah. me all the way back to vanilla. I, I, I want them to focus on improving the game. Like, I want to see more things like this UI. If you're not working on this 
modular content, if you're making the game evergreen, like keep improving everything we have and elevate that. And I do not care if your content suffers. We've learned from Final Fantasy now that people just take breaks. Don't don't over pursue my dollar in that way. And in that way, like to me, if you buy a year sub to World of Warcraft, you're insane. Like, why would you lock in for that long? It's important to walk away. That's how you're going to avoid burnout. You don't need that sunk cost fallacy poking at you at the end of the day when you're getting home at 10 p.m. and you're thinking, what should I do with my few minutes of my evening? You don't need World of Warcraft there going tick, 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 tick at you. To get meta about it, I think there's a reason we are seeing a vast majority of MMO content creators bounce between. And I don't think you can call it a trend yet because we had the, the mass exodus to Final Fantasy 14 and then there were, you know, little... What, speaking broadly, I don't mean to downplay any of these games, except for maybe New World. But Guild Wars 2. <laughs> People like New World. We're, we're here saying we like things and let us like them. Like, don't pick on New World. <laughs> it's me. This is my video. This is my opinion. It's true. <laughs> I think New World is trash. Um, but Final Fantasy was the, the big thing. And I don't think you can call it a trend because we haven't seen the other end of this pendulum. But I'm calling it now. This is how I think a lot of creators that you may know and enjoy are going to go. I think they're going to they're going to hit the wall of Final Fantasy 14 content. They're going to jump off the pendulum, jump on the <laughs> pendulum of World of Warcraft as it has new content. And when WoW reaches the end of that arc, when they're waiting for a point one Dragonflight patch, they're going to head back to Final Fantasy 14 where new content has been injected. I think that's how a vast majority of them are going to go replace whatever MMO with whatever other MMO your content creator of choice is playing. That's how I see this is going to go. I think it's going to be World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy for a lot of people out there. Maybe it'll be Guild Wars. Maybe it'll be SWOTOR. Maybe it'll be that new Riot MMO that's coming out. Obviously, a lot of people are going to check that. Hey, don't forget ESO. A lot of people really like ESO. Yes, and there's no shade there. I actually really like ESO as well, but I stay away from it because uh, I lost a lot of time to it very quickly. <laughs> and I was just like, yep. And none of my friends are playing it. So uh, to me, MMOs are co-op experiences, so I'm also somewhat swayed by where my friends are. And that's my big answer to what would get me to play WoW more on the regular. I'll play more if my buddy plays. It's a co-op game. It, it's more enjoyable with friends. Certainly mythics are more enjoyable with friends. Do not do them by yourself. It's a miserable, toxic experience. It's been interesting. Dipping my toe back into World of Warcraft after such a long break, but more specifically after playing Final Fantasy XIV. Because because going into fourteen a year ago plus, when I when I was going into fourteen last year, in my head, even though I was I was done with WoW at the time, where I was mentally was that I thought Final Fantasy XIV might become the game that I play when I'm waiting on new WoW content. But I got it backwards. WoW is going to be the game that I play when I'm waiting on new Final Fantasy content. 